trust and obey. We're talking about obedience. Uh, some weeks ago, we put uh, in the bulletin an article by Kenneth W. Hagen. Uh, the children's church is dismissed. And, amen. Bless them, Lord. Uh, he had an article uh, in, his, in his magazine, his faith, uh, Word of Faith magazine, entitled, Obedience is Necessary. And uh, I'm sure some of you might have read it. And some of you might have at least seen the title, Obedience is Necessary. But I want to share a portion as we, as we begin this message today on listening to the voice, on trusting and obeying, amen, uh, God. Uh, he begins this, he says, there is a subject in today's world that is not popular among many children, teenagers, and adults alike. Sadly, it is also unpopular in many Christian circles. That subject is obedience. It seems you can talk about anything in our society as long as it doesn't involve adhering to a set of laws, rules, or regulations. Maybe one reason Christians don't like to talk about obedience is that in past, obedience sometimes carried a negative connotation. A relationship with Jesus was reduced to a set of rules. Don't do this and don't do that. In that context, obedience often meant adhering to regulations that were not necessarily in line with the Word of God. They were really the do's and don'ts of tradition, men's traditions. But when you begin to study the subject, obedience is the underlying theme of the entire Bible. Are you with me? Yes. He goes on how pertinent this subject is to the church today, especially in these end times. The book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis, we see obedience and disobedience from God's perspective as Adam's son went, well, sons went to worship him. Abel conformed to God's laws and brought the proper animal sacrifice according to God's instructions. But Cain, he wanted to do things his way. He wanted God to recognize and approve of him without bringing the sacrifice God's way. He wanted to do it his own way and still receive God's blessing. Why? But God refused the sacrifice. Refused his sacrifice. Why? Because he had told man from the beginning how to please him and thereby receive from him. So Cain's disobedience made receiving from God absolutely impossible. Amen. Amen. His statement that I might add on how pertinent, and I might add imperative, urgent, incisive, this subject is to the church today. Contrary to the scoffers who say all things will remain as the same as they always have been, Everything is in a state of upheaval and confusion. Good is bad, bad is good, up is down, down is up, black is white, white is black. It's all being mixed up today. Amen? The whole creation, the Bible says, is groaning, waiting for the redemption. Amen? Waiting for Jesus Christ to return. I thank God for the for the great 23rd Psalm, which almost everybody knows, amen? It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me, you know the Psalm, into green pastures and beside still waters. He is the great shepherd. Amen. And such a shepherd, and as such a shepherd leads, but we must follow. Come on now. There'll be no green pastures and there'll be no still waters unless we follow the good shepherd. Follow his word. Hear his voice. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And it is so important, so, so vital in this day for us to be able to make it through these end times. And all that's going on, the Bible said that in the end, Jesus said in Matthew 24, he gives us all the signs of the end times. And there, it's not a pretty sight. It's not something you want to read. But I want to tell you, it has a good ending. 
Jesus is coming back to earth again and he's going to receive a people that are ready and watching and waiting for him that have been redeemed and saved that are following Jesus and turned their lives over to God who are listening to his voice and following his word obeying what God's word says. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be vital for your blessing. It's going to be the difference between success and failure. Victory and defeat. That we hear his voice like we have never heard it before. Amen. And that we follow his word and what he says to us. Amen. He is the great shepherd. Amen. And Jesus said, as the, as the brother shared, Dr. David there, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Amen. And again, many are in great want today. There's great, great want. But I thank God, the psalmist said, because he's my shepherd, I shall not want. We are on a different, we are on a different pay scale. We're on a different uh, 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 kingdom than the world. We're on a different financial plan than the world. We're on a different health plan than the world. If all that goes to hell, we've still got Jesus Christ. He's got the greatest health plan. He's got the best yeah. financial, amen, action you can have. God will take care of his own. He will see us no matter what they do with the monetary, no matter what they do with the money situation, and they got plans that are absolutely demonic and antichrist. But we don't have to be afraid. All we have to do is listen to the voice. All we have to do is obey his word. Hallelujah. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. My God. Thank God for God. Amen. Amen. The hurricane survivors have lost everything. Some 30, 40 last count, maybe more now, have lost their lives. But your blessing, let me tell you, your blessing, Amen. everything in your life is tied to your obedience. Hallelujah. And it will become more pronounced and more evident of who are blessed and who are not. Who have peace and who have no peace. And you will know by those signs. The obedient from the disobedient. The blessed from the cursed. Before we have been able, God has allowed certain things. And has been most gracious and still is. He's allowed his people to hear his voice but not obey it. But even then, though he has allowed it, if you will look at those lives, yes, they're making it, but in the days ahead, it will not be so. You will not be able to not hear his voice, not obey his voice, and still make and see yourself through in the days in which we're living and the situations that we're facing and the things that are changing daily. Daily, things are changing. Amen. Nothing is remaining like it was. Nothing's going back to the way it was. Get rid of that. Get that out of your mind. It will never be the same again. But I can tell you, with God and with God's people, hallelujah. Yeah, it may get worse, but I'm going to tell you, for us, it's going to get better. I said it's going to get better. not be able to hear it and not do it 
and not have the consequences. Do I have anybody listening to me? Amen. My God, I'm glad I got some listening ears this morning. Amen. Amen. So many have gotten by to this point, but if things continue and they will as they are, amen, it will be a different story. Yes. Amen. A.W. Tozer, uh, born in 1897 and uh, went to be with the Lord in 1963, was an anointed, powerful man of God, an American Christian pastor, author, magazine editor, and spiritual mentor, greatly used of God. And he made a comment that goes with what I believe God is saying this morning. He said he seldom, or it, it says uh, about him, he seldom used an unnecessary word. His sentences were plain and vivid, connecting with readers like an electrical circuit. And I want you to listen to this Tozer paragraph, and I'm quoting. He said this, he said, One great concern I have is that many of today's Christians are not taking the Word of God seriously. Oh, yeah. For whatever reason, the scriptures do not have authority in the preacher's life in the way that it is necessary for him or her to live a life of glory to God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today many Christians are willing, but they're not obedient. Hallelujah. Come on, now we've all been willing. Hallelujah. We're all in this. Yeah. I'm in this, you're in this whether you want to be or not. We're all willing. Amen? I'm willing. Call me willing. But I haven't always been obedient. Can you say amen or oh my? Amen or uh -huh. my? Yep, yep, we've all been there, done that. But our text says if you be well on men, we shall eat the good of the land. Amen? We want to. We know we should. God has spoken to us about something. Usually more than once, amen. But we just haven't found a way to, to make it happen, a way to obey. I mean, no, there's a way to obey. Yes. Hallelujah. I said there's a way to obey. Yes. God has made a way to obey. Yes. So we can't go on saying no way. <laughs> Jose, excuse me, Jose. You need to take your name in vain. Hallelujah. Amen. So we haven't found a way to do what God says in His Word. Can I give you a case in point? Amen. God says in His Word in Hebrews 10.25, He says, Let us not forsake the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, as some people do, but encourage, exhorting, and warning each other. And so much more, especially now that you see the day of the Lord coming, back again and it is drawing near. He said encouraging one another as we see all these things coming on the earth as Jesus said in Matthew 24 as I mentioned. Amen. Now how many know that there are some exceptions to every rule? Yes. But the problem is that we have is that we make the exception the rule too many times. Come on now. I know that's going to be a tough one. Small or hard. We make the exception the rule. And that's easy to do. There are exceptions, of course, of work, illness, caretaking, vacations, times of rest, R&R. &R. Amen? There are exceptions to the rule. But the word still remains the same. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. And today I can tell you, the manner of some is a whole lot of sums. Yes. They forsake the church of God. They forsake the house of God yes. Sunday after Sunday, service after service, and think nothing of it. True. I want to tell you, you're robbing yourself. Amen. And you're robbing the body of Christ. Yes. You are killing yourself. Yes. Every corporate word God gives is so vital. It, it makes the difference between victory or defeat. I have been where you sit. I know. And I know what goes on. And I have done the same, forsaken it. And God came and said, you can work two or three jobs, son, 
I was leading worship on a Wednesday night there at the Assembly of God in Little Rock, the church there. And I was had two or three little prom snatchers. Hungry. All the time hungry. And I needed to make every dollar I could. Back in the 70s, it was $2 an hour was the normal wage. You can't even buy a Starbucks for $2. And if you made three dollars over time, you were doing real good. Oh, yeah. Aren't you glad you're not having to work for that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But because the was late, but anyway, so I worked all the hours I could work. Amen. I was the lead guy in the rebuilding shop, all the starter generators, and uh, uh, I could stay all night if I wanted to. Amen. And uh, uh, I uh, took advantage of it and began to work. And so I began to call the pastor. I said, Pastor, you know. I'm uh, I'm going to have to work tonight. I didn't have to work, but I told him I had to work a lot. <laughs> well, I, I, I convinced myself, and you know, that I had to work because I got to feed these. Yeah, you know. yes. I got to pay the bills here, and uh, but I I didn't feel good about it. And the Lord came to me and let me know. He said, "Son," he said, "You can work yourself to death, or you can trust me and believe that I will provide for you." in the one job and you can do what I've called you to do and obey what I've told you to do. Yes. And I said, God, okay, that's a good deal. I'll 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 go for that. So I started back on Wednesday night. And that Sunday morning, before the Wednesday came again, or maybe it was after that, uh, 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 my brother in law, I, I had loaned him two dollars. Forget. Or he had, yeah, I had loaned him two dollars. I had a little Ford Pinto at that time. Yeah. Don't make fun of me. Hey, man, at least I had a car. It was the best car I had that I had ever had up to that point. Hey, Amen. It was painted like a pinto. It had white with brown spots. And some people thought it was a rat. Some people thought it was a cow. Some people thought it was whatever. Some people thought it needed a paint job, you know. But it ran good. And it was good on gas, yes. which I had it today. Amen. Amen. I spent 120 bucks on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You too. Yeah. Uh, so that most Sunday morning came in. I loaned him two dollars. Well, I had to go up to Camp Finner there up in the uh, up above Little Rock. There was a camp up there, a, 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 a prison camp, and I had I had a ministry there every Sunday. I would go up. There was I was the only one they had one allowed to go into the three domes that were there, and I would call out, chapel time, chapel time, and we'd all go down to the to the uh, uh, kitchen, and I'd bring some groups in sometimes, whatever, anyway, God blessed it. Well, I had to get up to the camp, but I didn't have any gas yeah. at the church yeah. that afternoon. So I said, I hate to ask my brother-in-law for that two dollars. The Bible says if you loan, don't ask it back. <laughs> but, how many ever feel like, but, yeah. you, got a, you got a situation. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to obey you, Lord, but I got a situation, you know. So I asked him. I said, "Brother, uh, have you got that two dollars? I need it for gas for the ministry." Uh -huh. He said later he didn't even hear what I said. Uh -huh. He hands me a wad of bills. I said, "That's the fattest two dollar roll I've ever had." <laughs> <laughs> but I may know you don't pull it out in the middle of the church and start counting. No, I just stuck it in my pocket. And didn't think anything about it until after I was leaving, uh, uh, going down, what is it, 138 there? Yeah. And uh, so I pulled it out and said, well, we got to see what's going on here. Yeah. It was $200. Whoa. Whoa. God said, I told you. I called my brother I said, brother I said, do you know what you did? Are you sure that's, I said, $2. <laughs> He said, he said, brother, he said, God told me to do this before you ever said anything. Wow. Wow. God can talk to people's hearts. He can move mountains. He can do what no other can do. And it was just his way of proving to me, amen, after I made the decision to obey. 
that he provided. The blessing came after the obedience. Amen. So I thank God that was the best $200 tank of gas I ever had. Amen. <laughs> Many times. Glory to God. Let us not let us encourage one another. Amen. Amen. There's a saying, and I'm sure you know what it says. says Where there's a will, there's a way. Hallelujah. How many know Jesus is the way maker? Yes, there is a way to obey. Yes, Somehow, some way, I've got to find a way to obey what God's saying to me, yes. what God has spoken to me, yes. what I know that He wants me to do. I went for a whole year one time knowing what God wanted me to do in an area and I couldn't, I wanted to do it. I tried to do it week after week and failed after failure after failure. Never got it done. Yeah. But how many know God is a, is a merciful God? Yeah. He's a patient God. Yeah. Yes, he, he stays is. with us. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. And he kept working, kept, kept helping me. He said, I know you're going to make it. Amen. I know you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And finally after about a year I was able to do what I knew he wanted me to do. Yes. Amen. But in that year I was not blessed as I could have been Hallelujah. if I had done what he said Amen. when he said to do it. Yes. I was holding up my blessing. Yes. And sometimes we bless ourselves and that's not a bad thing. Yes. But your blessing of yourself can only go so far. Hallelujah. You need the blessing of the Lord. Yes. Matter of fact, you need your blessing to be blessed of the Lord. Come on. That's why we tithe. We honor God with the first fruits. Because I want God to bless the other 90% and it'll go further than the 100% that I hold on to. I've learned that. How many ever learned that? And I learned it through Bank of America. Hallelujah. And so many checks bounce. Amen. The, the thing, the, the wallet that the checks were in bounced. Amen. Just everything bounced. So I got the message. God says everybody ties. Some ties to the work of God and to me. And others ties to Bank of America. Ties to the me mechanic, the doctors. And we all need those things sometimes. Right? But how many know when you honor God, He blesses your substance. He rebukes the devourer for your sake. My shoes will last longer than your shoes if you're not a tie. Hallelujah. And my wife's shoes, they last forever. We're going to get a new house. Amen. Hallelujah. She blessed. But the dog, Baxter, got a hold of the shoes she was going to wear this morning. Snatched one right off the, right off the desk. Shoot it up real good. And she said, Baxter! And he ate a whole box of chocolates last night, too. Oh. Quicker than you could say Jimmy Brett Poor. <laughs> and there were macadamians in them. The last time my dog ate macadamians from Honolulu with the chocolate cost me 600 bucks. Almost killed it. Dogs are not supposed to have macadamians. And these were garlic. That's double trouble. Nor chocolate. Nor chocolate. Thank you. So he's still alive as far as I know. They called the vet and said, I'll just give him some food. And, yeah. So you pray for me, amen. Pray for us. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, obedience is, to God is the key to happiness. Yeah. Obedience to God is the key to happiness. The key to happiness. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I may, I may know that mm, I believe the body of Christ could be much happier than they are. Yeah. I can say that for my own life. I'm not saying I've arrived or I've achieved anything. Amen. I'm listening to God as best as I can. Obeying as, as best as I know how. Amen. Yeah. And I know you're, I'm sure, doing your best. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, if you do your best, God will take care of the rest. Yeah. Huh? And I may not get it all right, not perfect, but God says at least you try. That's all I'm, I just want you to try. Hallelujah. God loves if you just keep trying. If at first you fail and don't succeed, quit. No, that's not what you do. You keep trying. 
Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to share in closing, if you'll, if you'd like to follow along with me, if you'll take out of your bulletin, uh, the declarations for spiritual warfare here, a couple of declarations I want to, to go along with the trust and obey. If, you'll, if you'd like to follow along, pull that out. It's, we're going to start with September 19th. These are the words of Jesus, uh, not my words, but his words. Amen? These are his words. And they exemplify what God is saying this morning. Your obedience brings my blessings, says the Lord. Your obedience brings my blessings. Did you like the yes on that blessings? Hallelujah. The Lord says, in my word, I have laid out my plan for how my children can receive my blessing. Be careful to do all that I have commanded. And my blessing will flow out to you and to your children. And to all of your substance. Amen. Not only does God want you blessed, he wants your children blessed. Yes. Wow. And he wants everything you have blessed. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Everything your hand touches or foot treads upon will be successful. Yes. Obedience will also bring you the blessing of protection from your enemies. For I will be your strong tower. Hallelujah. If you obey me, I will bless you with life and will release you from death. Hallelujah. My son died on the cross to release you from death. All you have to do is receive my gift. To receive my gift is to walk in my way by being obedient to my word. Amen. Before our prayer declaration, let's turn over to the second word of God to us this morning. Your obedience activates your faith. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. We know that. Amen. We receive everything by faith. Yes. Spirit of God, Jesus says, My child, the way that I will know that you love me is by your love to me yes. and your obedience to my instructions. Yes. My commandments are not burdensome, for, though, for through your obedience you will overcome the world. Yes. You see how important obedience is? Yes. We've got to overcome this world because it's overcoming a lot of folks. Yes. Say it's not going to overcome me. Because I'm going to be obedient to God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what an overcomer is. Amen. The Lord continues says, It is your faith that overcomes the world. What good is your faith if it is not accompanied by your actions? Without action, faith is dead. Your obedience demonstrates to me that you trust me and believe that I know what is best for you. And that you are honoring your commitment to follow me. If you want to receive my blessings, you must demonstrate that I am the Lord of your life. Your obedience is the testing ground. In the testing ground, we'll do that. The test of obedience. To do or not to do. Trust me with all your plans. Love me by keeping my word. Do not sin against me. And I will shower my blessings down upon you. Wow. I want to just for a second draw your attention to you must demonstrate that I am the Lord of your life. Many of God's children, He is their Savior, but He is not their Lord. Are you hearing me? There is some discussion on can He be your Savior and not also be your Lord. Well, the Lord is simply says that you're doing what he says. Yeah. Amen? And Luke 6, 46, Jesus says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Come on. Hallelujah. Then he gives the illustration of a house that's built upon sand and one that's built upon the foundation of God. And you'll hear more about that next week. Amen. But if we do not do 
what God, what we know God has told us and spoken to us to do, how many know that we are not just in disobedience, we are in rebellion? Yes. I said we're in rebellion. Yes. Now we know we all started out rebels. Uh -huh. Oh, you look like angels today, but I know <laughs> one time you were a rebel. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see some of the rebel written right across the forehead. Amen. You see one right here. Yeah. 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 And so things reveal where our heart's at and who we really are. See, we don't we don't really realize it because we don't obey what God said. He said, Don't forsake it shows that you're in rebellion. And you can get your own blessing your way. But again, I'm telling you, it will not prevail in these days. Make up your mind. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. we got a prayer declaration here. We're going to read that in just a moment. But let me close. Continue the closing. In our little video that we show, how many know that that controller in that tower was a type of God? As the man said, he said, in the control tower to those men in the airplane, that pilotless airplane, he said, my job is to get you home safe. Yes. The Holy Spirit's job is to get you home safe. Amen. For you to accomplish your purpose and your destiny. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You have a purpose and you have a destiny. And it is committed to getting you where you need to be. And doing what you should be doing. And he keeps working with us. He keeps with us. Thank God he's committed to getting us home safe. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you want me to get you home safe, you remember him? He said, you've got to obey my voice. If you want to get home safe, we have got to obey the voice of God. Because there is so much that's going on today that is not safe. Come on now. If you're not going to obey my voice, he said, you're going to die. Yes. I can't say it any clearer, folks. Church, I love you. We have got to obey the voice of God. Your house will stand. That's next week. Pastor Cowboy. Amen. You're going, woo. Ah. Uh, if you're not going to obey my voice, you're going to die. He said, follow my voice. Without God's voice, we have nothing. Nothing, he said, nothing. He said, there's a lot of bad weather between here and there. And you're in for a rough ride. There's a lot of bad weather between here and there. Between here and the coming of the Lord. Are you with me? And we're in for a rough ride. It's rough out there. Everything is not peaches and cream for all of us here. We're all going through things, amen. We're facing and dealing with what we have to deal with. Yes. The gas prices, the food, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Hallelujah. They need to control everything. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. They already have the plan and executed, but God has a plan. Yes. I remember a time in my life you thought he had me. And for all intents and purposes, he did. But God said, just before I went, I'm ready to go down the tomb. God said, oh, hold it. Hold it, Mr. Devil. That one's mine. I know he hadn't been obedient. And I know he's crazy. I know he's acting bad. But he belongs to me. I mean, no, there's a whole bunch of folks you know they belong to him. I said they belong to him. Hallelujah. Don't you can't have them. I said you can't have them, devil. They belong to God. My kids belong to God. They're sanctified by my faith and my obedience to the word of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your word. Amen. He says, you, you can't see me, but I can see you. 
play hide and seek with God. <laughs> you can't see me. <laughs> Remember how you kids did? That little butt sticking up in the air. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. You can't see me, but I can see you. Yeah, God. He said, if you're not going to obey my voice. Oh, I already said that, didn't I? <laughs> he says, there's a lot of rough weather between here and there. I don't want you to look at what's going on outside. I don't want you to pay attention to the storm. Come on now. There's a whole lot of storms going on. The sea of light is raging. Storms are all around us. Sometimes we go through storms. But he doesn't want us to get our eyes on the storm, on the problem. He wants us to keep our eyes on the answer of Jesus who will take us through the problem, through the storm, hallelujah, and bring us safely to the harbor of rest. Woo, glory to God. Amen. I don't want you to pay attention to that storm. Just my voice. Come on now. Sometimes when we're in the storm, we kind of get away from his voice and we get away from the Bible because we're going through so much. Yes. We're like shell-shocked. Come on, you ever been there? Yeah. Just shell-shocked. You're just sitting there. What else? What next? Yes. You can hardly even say the words. Amen. He says, just my voice, just listen to my voice. I'll take you through this. I'll take you through this. Do you believe God will take you through whatever yes. this is? Yes. What is this in your life? God says to you today, I'll take you through this. I'll take you through the this of tomorrow. I'll take you through the this of, of next week. I'll take you through the this of the end of the year. I'll take you through this, whatever this is. I'll take you through. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, I'll take you through this. We're praying for you, he said. How many know people are praying for you? I said, how many know people are praying for you? Yes. And if nobody's praying for you, I saw when I was on vacation, I saw, of course, I opened the word there. Thank God the place I had a Gideon's Bible, but I had them home. But I, I told him I, I appreciate the hotel having a Bible in the hotel. They still have a Bible. Amen. Most of them have taken it out. But anyway, the verse I saw, I wrote it down, and it's in my journal. It said that not only is Jesus interceding for us, but the next verse says the Holy Spirit is interceding for us. Yes. Woo, to the Father, for His children. Hallelujah. We have someone praying for us. Yes. And if nobody is praying for you here, and at times we feel like nobody is praying for me. Have you ever been there? Yes. Nobody knows. And you're not sharing all your business. But Jesus knows. Yes. And you've got two intercessors at least. And that's the best you can have anyway. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Jesus, I'm getting happy here. Just I'm trying to finish this up here. He says, I'll take you through this. I'm praying for you. You're going to make it. He says, you're going to make it. It doesn't look like you're going to make it. There's times coming where it won't look like you're going to make it. Hear me, church. It will look like we're not going to make it. It will look like America's not going to make it. And look for sure like a California is not going to make it. Good God Almighty. Have we got an insane person in Sacramento? Pure insanity. Mm. But you're going to make it. Tell the one next to you, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Tell them again, we're going to make it. Tell them. Till you see that there's something that till their eyes aren't glassed over right now. Tell them we're, we're, we're going to make it. Yeah. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We are going to make it. Write it down. Put it in paper. Put it in writing. We, God says, we are going to make it. not an easy word. This is a, this is a challenging good. word. Yes. But it's a good word. Yes. Oh, Amen. We're going to make it. But listen to the voice, he said. That's the key. That's the key. Listen to the voice. I may know God knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah. I heard 
heard somebody say, God knows what he's doing. All you have to do is trust him. God knows what he's doing. Sometimes I wonder, God, you know what you're doing? <laughs> do you really know what you're doing? Sure don't look like you know what you're doing. Come on, can we be honest? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like, God, are you, are you listening? You don't hear nothing say, is there somebody else up there? <laughs> you don't need somebody else, all you need is God. Amen. He's listening. He hears you. Hallelujah. He said there's a lot of voices in your head. Amen. A lot of voices going on. Everybody wants to talk to you, wants you to, wants to be the controlling voice in your life. Everybody knows what you should be doing, where you should be going. No, no, many times they don't know if they know it all. But God knows. And it's His voice. And only His voice that I'm going to listen to. Amen. Everybody wants to talk to you. I want you to be a living sacrifice, to put yourself on the altar and let my voice be your voice. Where have, you listened, where have we been hearing that for the last several weeks on Wednesday night with Pastor and Teacher Brother Raymond? Amen. He won't even get off of it. I tell you, he's been on it. Just every Wednesday, bam, 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 bam. But it's been a good bam. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Boy, if ever a man was hearing from God, yes. brother, you've been hearing from God. God has anointed you. He's anointed our ministers here yeah. today. Pastor Joe, I'm telling you, God has set himself to do something in these last days. And he's going to, some of what he's going to do is going to be right here. He's already doing it, but you have not seen the manifestation yet fully that you're about to see. God has set us up. I said, God, this is a set Get out there, the closer his coming is. Yeah. Woo. 
He says, when you see the light, there will be in the form of a cross. And when you see the cross, say, remember, remember, the cross is the way home. God gave us a vision about the cross here. When, we, when God gave us that cross, gave that cross to us from a brother in Roseman, and we put it up, and he helped put it up, we, we set the, the cement, Brother Raymond and I, just about the little girl that was lost. You remember the story, some of you? And the policeman asked her, he says, so where do you live? She says, I don't know where I live. I'm not even sure she even knew her name, but she said, but she told us, they said, but if you'll take me to the church with the cross, I can find my way home. Take me to the church with the cross, and I can find my way home. I want to tell you, people with the cross right here have parked out here in this parking lot, and that cross has ministered them. They told me that they just sat there and looked at the cross. A light in the darkness. Yeah. It was Sister Beverly that had that vision. Yeah. Dr. Comerson's wife. The cross is the way home. Yeah. Don't forget it. He said, we still couldn't see anything. Stay with me. Shortly said they landed. The voice said, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. How many know I hear God saying to each one of us, thanks, son? Thank you, daughter, for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. How many of you get happy when somebody listens to you? Yeah. I better not go too far with that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thanks for listening, the voice said. He said, I watch them crash and burn all the time. I watch people crash and burn all the time. People are crashing and burning in our society all the time. And unfortunately, it's so in the church too. He says, I watch them crash and burn because they won't follow my voice. They don't understand. I'm the one who can see them even when they can't see me. But they get the voices in their head and they kill themselves. They self-destruct. That's a powerful word. I don't know about you, but that, that really hits me. So we're just going to confess these verses. Can you stand with me? Would you stand with me and close it? This is the third closing. It's the final closing. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you've got the little, the little prayers there, why don't we confess them together? Would that be okay? Hallelujah. This is our prayer declaration this morning, church. Let's say it together at one time. On three, one, two, three, Lord. I pray that you will have confidence in my obedience, for I will put... My God, we've got a lot of mumbling going on. But I didn't hear anything really. Have you all got it? All right. We don't want this just to be a prayer with our lips moving. Amen. But we want to really mean what we're praying. So the Bible says, when you pray, believe that you receive and you'll have it. I may go believe you receive now when we pray this prayer declaration. We're going to have this. Yes. Say, I'm going to have this. Yes. This is not just a message or a word. This is for me. I'm going to have this. Yes. I'm going to have his blessing. Yes. In a cursed world. But God didn't curse it. Amen. All right. All together now. Lord, I pray that you will have confidence in my obedience. For I will put myself to the test to be obedient in all things. May all the blessings of the Lord come upon me and overtake me. Because I obey your voice, you will not cast me away because I will be obedient to you. I will walk after your ways and obey you in all things. I will serve you and hold fast to you. 
Amen and amen. 